Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Grace and Hope Consulting Podcast here. So we've been talking about resilience. And today I have a good friend of mine, Kayline is here to you know, talk about resilience, not just what it is, but some of the things that she overcome, what has helped, and uh, how you too can find strength to be resilient in, in face of adversity. So Kayline, if you don't mind just sharing who you are, what you do, and where you're located. So I am located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I am a intern here at Grace and Hope Consulting. I'm a senior at Liberty University studying psychology with a focus in crisis counseling. I also am a mom and author and the founder and CEO of Journey to Hope Widow to Wholeness. So I wear a lot of different hats. I'm serving at church, I'm serving in the community and just wherever I can just kind of just help out and explore different options and just my passions on what I love between grief, trauma, and pro-life. That's pretty much where I am. Yeah, thank you so much. You do a lot for sure. But like you say, you're doing a lot of work that makes a difference. You do a lot of things that you're passionate about because it means so much to you personally. It's not just, oh, this is what I'm going to school for. And this is why I know I'm doing as part of school. I know these things you're personally connected to this issue, the trauma, the grief, you know, the, you know being pro-life, those are things that are important to you. So if you just want, before we get into that, um, if you don't mind just sharing when you hear the word resilience, you know, because you had to face, you face those things and you, you know, you, you overcame and you're overcoming, uh, you know, and, and working through all of that and turning it to, you know, beautiful things that you're doing. But before we get into some of the things now, personal stories per se, I wanted to just hear from your take, have been through, have been through challenges and overcoming them and, you know, turning them into something greater and better. How do you define resilience? What comes to mind when you hear the word resilience? Mm. I think of resilience is something that is not learned in school. <laughs> yep. You don't go to school and take a course on how to be resilient, which I think that it should be a course because that's, right. that's, I mean, that's a big we're, thing. We're working on that. We know there's a lot of courses, I guess, for personal development, you know, to help people become resilient. But you're right when you're going to, you know, formal school, traditional school, it's not part of the mm -hmm. curriculum, you know. Of yep. No, it's not. I think it's pretty much for me, when I think of resilience, I think of facing that thing that I'm scared of or that thing that tried to take me out. Mm -hmm. Facing that thing, the most scariest thing in the world, the most fiercest thing in the world, being able to face that, look it straight in the eye and say, I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to quit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going. No matter how hard it is, no matter how bad it looks, I'm going to keep going no matter what. So that's what I think of when I hear resilience. Yeah. It goes beyond just being um, a quitter. Mm -hmm. Someone that says, you know what, I'm going to stay in the game no matter what. And definitely, you know, all of that comes from first that internal decision, right? I have to decide mm -hmm. first that I am not going to quit, that I am not going to stay the course and then start acting it out or living it out. Right. So mm -hmm. that mindset is really important. Often, you know, people don't think about what we think about, right? But if you right. if you think about it, everything you do or not do is often a result of what you think up here first. So a mindset unlocks, you know, or blocks our own blessings, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we definitely you know we all have all of us have room to grow in that. But you know, mm -hmm. when you start, you know, really taking control of your thoughts, taking control of how you see the world, how you think. It really changes mm -hmm. your entire life. It does. It does. Yeah. And that is, that's so important to make that decision on the inside, you know, because I've had <laughs> many, many times where I've just said, am I just going to just sit here or am I going to continue to keep going no matter what? Mm -hmm. And that was, that's a hard decision. And I think being faced with that, especially when you're faced with different things over and over again, you get to a point where you're like, okay. Do I really want to keep doing this? And in that moment is when you get that strength, that supernatural strength to just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that choice for sure. And mm -hmm. so for you, we mentioned a little bit already that for grief and trauma and you know parenting, you know single parenting mm -hmm. too, you know on top of all that. 
you have made that you've been making that decision day in and day out to keep going to not give up do you mind just sharing a little bit you know you don't have to go into details and only share what you're comfortable with but just give us a little you know taste i guess of what life looks like you would be like oh, this thing is great like oh my goodness that's all the time in the world and you're like uh-uh right it's yes not always, you know, we'll just hear, it is you know there's there's there are things that you know are not as easy or um and they can be challenging as we are you know going for life so if you just want to again just share a little bit of your story so let's see where do i start <laughs> so being being married at a young age um having kids and my first marriage didn't work out um being divorced being young being divorced um being a divorced single mom raising three kids and then remarrying again mm -hmm. and then being widowed um, at the age um, of 27 and five months pregnant with three young kids. That, it was hard. It, it just, even as I look back on it now, it's just like, how did I, how did I, how did I, what got me through all of that? I know that it was the Lord that got me through everything, but just looking at that, what I've gone through to where I am now, like all those days of just being up late, just, you know, just figuring out what are we going to eat today? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that we didn't have food, but it was just like, I'm tired. You know, I'm doing it by myself. I'm not getting any help. Mm -hmm. And just asking myself, is this, is this really my life? Mm -hmm. You know, is this really my life? Am I Am I really doing this day in and day out? Is there ever any light at the end of the tunnel? Mm -hmm. And today I can look, I can look in the mirror and I can just smile and know that the supernatural strength that God has given me to walk me through all those late night insomnia nights, you know, crying in the shower, not wanting to get out of my car when the kids are sleeping in the car. Cause I'm like, Oh, I gotta go in, and, you know, be mommy all over again. And just all of the in between and then dealing with my own mental health challenges and dealing with my own stuff. It was just a lot, you know. I know a lot of people look at me and they think, oh, she's all put together. She has everything going for her. And it's just like, you have no idea <laughs> what I deal with, you know, as a single mom raising four kids, trying to balance my schedule, their schedule, you know, run a home, run a business, go to school, you know, diff doing different things. What comes to mind as I say this, I think of, you know, in a the circus, there's that person that's holding all those different plates and trying to balance them. Mm -hmm. I think at times I, I go back and forth in between feeling like that. But what keeps me from dropping everything is my faith. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps me just keeps everything going. It's just, you know, the, the, the having my faith. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. And you say it's we all know many of us you know in the look all put together right but people often define success differently they see yes. all that we do and think oh they have it all together that's why they do all that they do and mm -hmm. for many of us it's the opposite we do all that we do because of the things we've been through or the things we're yeah. actually facing we have, we, have, we have this you know personal if you want investment you now we're personally invested in these issues because we have been personally affected by these yes issues. there's a whole yes. different you know different if you want um intention and you know in purpose if you know in pursuing mm -hmm. that the things that we do pursue and so thank you for just sharing that you know you there's a, you've been for a lot and yes I, yeah you've been for a lot and as a diversity and a single mom i you know my heart goes out to you and i didn't even deal with some of the things that you dealt with and i know how hard it's been right and yeah. people don't see that while they see the businesses we have this the people we help like you got it i got yeah. it i also have days where i cry in the shower I have days I'm like, I don't want to see another day. I want to sit here and just like, oh, this just vanished, right? And, yes. yeah. and then we see how for, for us, people of faith, it's our faith you know, keeps us going. But we also they recognize that for any of us to be resilient, no one can do it alone. No one. Yes. No one. Yes. And to do and so know, kind of you know, speaking on that, like for you along your journey, who or who were the people or the organizations or you know the support that was available to you or that maybe you had to go seek after in order to you know find your resilience and maintain it throughout your journey? So in the beginning, um, transitioning from being divorced, my my dad was my person. He was my 
he was my go-to person <laughs> for everything, you know, because I, I, I'm, I'm a daddy's girl. Mm-hmm. Um, going through being a widow, my dad was there. My mom was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an amazing Christian counselor, my church family, um, my friends, this wonderful organization, the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, the TAPS program. Mm-hmm. I've just gained friend, lifelong friendships um, with amazing women and men, similar situations of their losses, but just coming together in a in a you know a unified bond of grief where we all understand what's going on with um different things so yeah yeah Yeah. but the lord i'm sorry but the lord has really been just really been there um for me through everything and Mm -hmm. i think he's also placed a lot of people to be my support as well Mm -hmm. my faith just keeping my faith the lord just being the rock and the cornerstone of my mm-hmm. faith and also make putting people in my life who weren't there to be able to be a physical support mm-hmm. that I need to. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a friend years, years, years ago who um, told me the story. Sorry. The end, I guess, the summary of all of that is that although we have God, we God, we need God, obviously, you know, for those of us in the faith, like we cannot do without him. And it's mm-hmm. that then we need God with a skin. Right, and then, that, you know, and then that's why you know from the Christian faith we call the church you know God's hands and feet, right? It's you know mm-hmm. the body of Christ that come together and support one another. So yes. yeah, so like just exactly what you said about you know just kind of paraphrasing and putting different words, but the exact same thing. You had God, God is there supporting you, and then mm-hmm. God gives you God with skin, you know, people to you know extension of His grace for you, and you know yes. Him showing His love to you for you, you know, through people. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. So what would you tell another mom or another single parent, another divorcee, um, somebody else going through grief? You know, what, what would some be some words of encouragement that you could share with them? You're not alone. You are not alone. It feels like the whole world is ending. No one understands that you're in a bubble or maybe you're drowning and no one sees you screaming. No one sees you flailing, gasping for air. You're not alone. You know, I think when we go through things, the natural response that we do is we retreat to ourselves because we want to try, you know, to comfort ourselves and we want to try to, you know, self cope. Mm-hmm. But we need to reach out and to be able to say, hey, I'm hurting. Be vulnerable, you know, be, be real about it and just say, hey, I need help today, you know, because I'm 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 struggling and and I I I I've been crying all day and I can't think. And that's normal, you know. So I would just tell anybody going through that, you know, you're not alone. There is a tribe out there for you that is ready to love you and comfort you, you know. So yeah. Okay. And, and I think too, from kind of the psychological standpoint of things, it's when we're going through difficulties, it, now we feel like we're all the only person because it feels overwhelming. And so, mm-hmm. and, and it's so easy that when you are kind of submerged, if you want in your own trials, mm-hmm. that that's all you see, right? right. Because how it's, it feels so heavy, you know, yes. like you're carrying. And so like, literally it's like, you can't look up or, you know, left or right, like your head is down because it's just like, it's so heavy and not just, Maybe physically, there's nothing there to see that makes it heavy, but emotionally, it's mm-hmm. heavy, right? And then, and then that's not only that you know I totally get how people get there, but there's also sometimes there's shame, there's mm-hmm. guilt that comes with or adversity that comes with a pain over pain, right? right? And nobody wants to admit, oh, I lost so and so, and and then you know what if people grief for some type of like well if i was there if i have done this if i didn't go here if you no know, maybe if i was nicer than the day before and people naturally because they care they're still finding you know kind of bargaining if you want with with what had ha- has happened and mm-hmm. and all of that creates again that guilt that shame but if i was already feel like i was all alone because maybe i don't know anybody that dealt with this now i have mm-hmm. guilt and shame guess yes. what i'm hiding even more right I'm hiding even more. 
And so it's extra strength, you know, to actually decide to choose to reach out. So it, well, if you're listening to this and like, well, I'm not going for anything major right now. Well, take this as advice for when life does hit you because life will, things will happen, right? Yes. It might not be as big as grief. It might not be as big as divorce, but each one, each one of us go for our own stuff. Mm -hmm. like no matter what you are going like you said there is a tribe out there there are people who are set there who you know like you and i have chosen to live this life of supporting others so mm -hmm. reach out reach out because yep. what i've learned from my own journey is like i can on by myself i can only go so far mm -hmm. but when i can do so much more when i connect with others when i seek support for myself and not only for my own wellness but also just the impact that i'm about to you know i'm i'm created to make right i live a more fulfilled life a fuller life you know, right. as a mom, even, you know, as a person, just as a human being, I have a fuller mm -hmm. life when I intentionally, I intentionally reach out and connect with others. Right. So if you start that level of connecting, you know, it's don't just wait when things fall through, like when things are hard to start connecting, because it's even harder to do it then. So it be proactive, yeah. right? So you be proactive now when things are maybe calmer for you. There's a time to start like, okay, who do I have in my circle? Who are the people mm -hmm. that I can go to? What are people, maybe it's maybe that it's not like they're going to fix it per se, but maybe right. in a tough day, I might need someone to talk to. Well, I'm not going to right. wait for the tough day to find that person. I'm going to start right. building this friendship, building this relationship, building that support group. Well, when everything looks okay or things are manageable so that, you know, when there are difficulties, I don't feel like, oh, I'm going to burden them because I never call them. We never talk. Right. And now I'm just coming like, hey, I <laughs> right? I see we're just like, mm, you know, it's so good. That if you right. have cultivated that relationship, there's, right. no, there's no shame or guilt in that. There's just, you know, these are my peeps, right? This is my tribe. You pick up the yep. phone call. And yep. there's so many, so many support groups, even online. And if you need help finding some of those, just, you know, let us know. Um, where myself or, you know, Kaylin can definitely, you know, do a little research and we have a lot of resources as well already, you know, as part of a database that we can share with you. But there, right. there, there are so many resources out there, even just going on Facebook and Googling, you know, uh, typing in whichever, you know, thing you're struggling with, you know, it's depression, there's a support group for that. And actually we offer a depression and anxiety support group, you know, stress, we offer a support group for that. There's groups for widows, we have a group for caregivers even on Facebook, we have a group for women who, you know, trying to achieve emotional wellness you have a, no so anyway there is a tribe for you that's no problem trying yes. to make. is a tribe for you and don't yeah. be afraid to seek professional counsel professional support when you need it right not a weakness a strong person yeah. know that they can only take themselves so far and because they yes. want to keep being strong they reach out for help reaching yeah. out for help is a form of strength not a weakness yes that's good that's good so true so true i had to learn that the hard way Don't in the know. beginning yep in the beginning i said oh no i'm good i got it i can you know i can manage and then it's just like when the circumstances you know they they go from knocking at the door to they're in your face they're in your bed and you can't get out the bed because you're just you're just swimming in all of this that's going on, you know, and I think, and you're right, you know, prioritizing mental health, you know, even as a single parent, you know, we have to stay on top of that, being able to say, hey, you know what, I may not have anything major going on, but I need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm angry sometimes, I, you know, I may be yelling at the kids, not intentionally, you know, I may have a little anxiety going on. And it's perfect to talk to someone, you know, even being, like you say, in a support group with other people, that's your tribe of people who understand you, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I've always had this notion, you know, you wait until a storm happens to go get help. Mm -hmm. And that's not true because you think of a natural storm, you know, we don't wait until it's like pouring down raining to go buy an umbrella. We keep, you know, if you're like me, you keep one in the van, you keep one in the yeah, house, right. you keep one in everywhere. So you're always prepared. But yeah, you know, just being able to be a part of a support group, you know, like you say, the ones that we offer, you know, whether it's weekly, whether it's monthly, just to stay connected, being connected and knowing that you have people that you can that you can talk to, that you can vent to. Because as a single parent, that's so important for us. We're caring, we're putting out and we've got to be able to replenish mm -hmm. as well. And that's where you get it from. Yeah, yeah. So true. true, so true. And, and I love I love that you see the idea of preparation. Think about, we just had a snowstorm here, right? PA or Virginia for you. <laughs> and what happens, that's when the weather men or women announces there's gonna be a storm, 
because mm -hmm. since COVID, we all know all the toilet papers are off the shelves, right? Yes. <laughs> and then, and then, you, know, you can't find any milk and, you know, you can't, you can't find the bread that you want because anybody would pick yep. it. Right? We do all of that for the natural stuff. Yeah. So as a people, I think as a society, we don't prepare well for the toll of life, period. Exactly. So yep. We don't prepare well for that. We prepare for natural events, but are you preparing for your mental health? Are you preparing exactly. for the things that will bring you down? Those struggles, think life will happen. Yeah. But it takes a toll on your psyche, it takes a toll on your mental health and emotions, you know, your focus, mm -hmm. your attention. And yeah. so you need to prepare for those things as well. Right. And yeah. I know you and I can go on and on on this because we're both passionate about it. <laughs> so you also are the co-author, you know, of the Be Resilient book, uh, Stories, Strategies and Tools to Help You Rise Above Your Circumstances. And so in the book, you know, for you guys watching and listening, she shares a lot more about her story and what has helped her and some you know, practical things as well. And so I really encourage you to grab your copy uh, and, you know, and, and, and read it. But there's a few more a women in, in the, the part of the book, myself included. And we have a whole workbook section that actually mm -hmm. gives you speaking about, you know, having a curriculum for, for resilience, <laughs> right? And really so how to guide, you know, mm -hmm. to, to becoming resilient. And there's yeah. you know, step by step, you know, just to take you there. And down the road, we'll be actually offering some workshops around that as well. And maybe a self study course, you know, we don't know yet. That I'm, I'm not committing it to that yet. But who knows? <laughs> but if you want to make sure that, like you say, the resources are available because they don't teach this in school, right? People don't talk about this in their family. And I didn't, I didn't grow up, you know, talking about these things, you know, when I was growing up, right? Nobody talked about it. And then no. half of like, oh, how do we deal with that? Yep. And then we all deal with most of us work in ways that are not always, you know, effective. And then mm -hmm. we create more, you know, more, more tragedy, we create more stress for ourselves, more adversity for ourselves in dealing with things in, in an effective way. So that's why we need help. And that's why we are committing ourselves to helping, whether it's the book, it's the workbook or a workshop that we're offering, or it's a counseling session, a coaching session with you, we're here for you. Yep. All right. And where can people find you? Before I let you go, Karen. People can find me on Facebook at Journey to Hope, Widow to Wholeness, or you can find me on my website at www.kaylinjnight.com. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. Not yes. just on the podcast, but being here yes. on Earth and doing, oh, and, and, do, and doing your part, you know, in making this place thank a better you. place. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure to be able to share with everyone. I'm excited, so excited about this book coming out. You know, I just pray that many people' lives will be touched. You know, and it will bring just a new, a new definition and a new perspective mm -hmm. of what resilience is. You know, from the six amazing women and our stories, and mm -hmm. just reading about it because I think that it's just this is a topic that many people are wondering mm -hmm. you know they're wondering about it how do I move forward how do I overcome can I overcome mm -hmm. and the answer is yes, yes you can you can, you can. <laughs> and you can start today by ordering a copy and get your workbook <laughs> and get great. signed up on the Grace and Hope Consultant website with some counseling some coaching and some workshops and get started you know it's a new year why not right. start that you know start your your year off yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for watching thank you for listening um depending on how you, you know are getting access to this and we will leave you with this you can overcome you are made for more so you can be more and help others do more as well yes you will yeah